Meanwhile, fallout from these comments from former Labor Secretary nominee Andy Puzner. So they look at what happened to you and just say, no way in hell I would ever do what he did I, to, to, to try a hand at the public sector. Yeah, I, I can't blame people for feeling that way. You do, you do see in this experience why good people don't go into government. I think the big problem here was that the, the left and the Democrats really didn't want a successful businessman who started out as a working class kid, who'd worked these working class jobs, who knew what it was, not to, not to come up with enough money at the end of the month, and then who had created tens of thousands of jobs and uh, knew what it took to generate economic growth. That was really their worst nightmare uh, for the Department of Labor. So Puzzler's saying liberals pushed them out, and, and tweets from viewers uh, of, of the left showing some are upset with those comments, but does he have a point? Reaction from another successful, very successful businessman, Scott Microsoft, uh, Sun Microsoft Systems uh, founder, co-founder at least, Scott McNeely. Scott, thanks for joining the show. Uh, you, know, you know, as more and more business people consider public life, do you think uh, that they're being judged harshly or differently, particularly from the left? And, and in, in this case, Andy Puzder, who, who ran a very successful company, pulling himself up by the bootstraps, but was in a heart, right in the, in the main battle, if you will, with higher minimum wage and things like that. Well, yeah, I think it is hard. And, you know, I'm certainly in that camp where people have asked me to... Uh, to run for office many times and I say there's not enough Kevlar to keep me alive <laughs> and uh, it would be quite quite an imposition uh, I've always said when when uh, people ask me about Trump I said the world's worst CEO is a thousand times better than the best politician I believe their training their decision-making their ability to handle multiple constituencies and their understanding that you just can't print money and tax your best customers uh, extra uh, it, it's just not the way you can operate long term, yet that's what every politician operates under is, hey, we can just tax our, our, our best customers and uh, we can uh, print money whenever we need to uh, buy more votes. It's just we just don't operate under that model. We just don't think that way. So I'm, I'm always fired up. Uh, a, a business school buddy of mine just became the governor of North Dakota, first time ever politician. Uh, and, and I think North Dakota has the best governor on the planet because this guy's been in business, he's been in technology, he understands how to create jobs, and uh, I, I think we need we need thousands of more people at all levels of government who are willing to to uh, take the garbage that's going to get thrown at them to uh, go do a a better job in uh, maintaining control over our out of control big government. You know, and, and, and to that point, I think maybe the key word here could be accountability. I mean, publicly traded companies held accountable every three months. Uh, and if you miss, even by a fraction, you could lose a lot of money for a lot of people. So we don't really have that in politics. You know, these politicians run for office and then they run again later on and, you know, they dance around the issues. But I love the idea of bringing back the accountability and also the idea of succeeding, whether it's CEOs or some of these generals, they're accustomed to accountability and achieving the mission. And I also think that government, by definition, is, I'm a, I'm a trained economist, and the one word in capitalism is monopoly power. Government actions are, by definition, government uh, agencies are, by definition, monopolies, and we ought to cut back on the scope creep. Government should not be in the education business, should not be in the insurance business, should not be in the health care business. And if you do have to do it, push it down to the, the, the local level or the county level or at the state level, push as much as you can uh, out of the federal level. And I'd just like to hear everybody at Washington, we don't want to push the State Department, we don't want to push uh, the court system, we don't want to push uh, defense and law enforcement and those kinds of things down to the local level. Those are, those are reasonable sure. national and federal sure. priorities. Sure. But so much of what our federal government is doing is scope creep. And uh, two-thirds of the federal budget, last time I looked, is taking money from people who rightfully uh, and lawfully own and earn that money and redistributing it to other people to buy votes in what is typically a very corrupt way it's and a, inefficient way. And, and the fuse is, uh, is burning quickly on how long they can continue to do that. I want to switch gears a little bit because Julian Assange looking to give tech companies access to the CIA's hacking tools. What's your reaction to that? Oh, wow. Um, I, a long time ago, in a place far, far away, I said, uh, you have no privacy, get over it. And uh, I, I got a lot of heat for that, but I just sort of saw what was coming. And I've certainly taught all my boys that anything they type or any, anywhere they are now, given all of the surveillance and all the rest of it, everything is a digital tattoo out there. 
And uh, unfortunately, uh, you know, there are times when uh, near absolute uh, security and privacy and anonymity is helpful, but uh, absolute anonymity uh, does breed irresponsibility uh, down the road. I mean, just think, would you be as civil if you were totally invisible and uh, left no fingerprints or footprints in the sand? You know, it's, it's really well, hard to be absolutely yeah. uh, civil when you have absolute anonymity. So there's a lot of trade-offs here in this thing. But it's a trade-off, uh, though, that, very, very you know, that, that the world should have access to you and your wife laying in bed watching the Samsung TV? Uh, you know, you sort of almost have to assume, you know, if you're, a sh you know, you have no privacy. It's some somebody knows what I'm watching. Uh, okay. you know, so, 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 I'd so rather have it be private companies because I can then fire them if they misuse the information, which is why I'm such a small biz, a small government uh, person in this. Uh, the less the government controls of my personal life, like health care, education, financial, loans, all the rest of it, the less worried I'm going to be that they're going to be snooping on me to force me to keep them in power. I want the government to keep me safe and protect my rights. And rights are something you can give everybody without taking from anybody. And that's the, that should be the role, especially of the federal government. Let the states experiment and do right. different levels of socialism right. and uh, whatever-isms that they want to go drive. But uh, at the federal level, we ought to keep that scope as small as possible. So we're not scared of the CIA because they're not going to change my student loan. Scott McNeely, thank you very, very much. Really appreciate it.